All right, always a pleasure to have my next guest on the show. Cody Brundage is back, and he's going to be fighting on March the 12th next against Dalcha Lungjiambula. How are you, sir? Good. I think that was that was spot on. Yeah, I mean, with all these crazy names in the UFC, I think I have to go back to school to to figure out how to pronounce all of them. They're just they're very very challenging. John Anik does it does it very well. It, it's been a minute since we've seen you inside the cage, my man. So I'm excited to see you back in there. Uh, obviously, at Factory X, one of the best gyms in the world. How has this camp been thus far? It's been great, man. I feel like uh, I've done a lot of things this camp that I've never done before. Um, I started working with a nutritionist for the first time, taking my diet a little more seriously. Um, and then adding a couple extra privates a week with coach Mark and then our jujitsu coach, uh, Scotty Miller, uh, which has been huge. And then adding some extra conditioning sessions as well. So I've just been adding a lot to what I'm doing. Uh, I think once I got in the UFC, I kind of realized like, you know, we're at a different level now. We got to do everything we can to win. And sometimes that's not even enough. So if I'm not doing every little thing, I'm really putting myself in trouble. So, uh, I've been really just up in the ante in terms of workload and, and work ethic. I love hearing that. So as far as the nutritionist goes, like what tweaks have you made to your diet? Have you just basically cut out anything that that's, you know, not healthy for you? Uh, so my cut's not bad. You know, I walk around 205, which is where I want to be. My weight's good. It's just more uh, cutting out the crap that I was eating because I really would eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. You know, I'd have pop. I'd have uh, little Debbie's. You know, I'm a big sweets guy. I'd have ice cream. So it's just cutting that stuff out for uh, 12 weeks and, and eating to perform, you know, I'm working with Tyler Minton. He works with a lot of our guys at factory X. He works with a lot of guys at glory. So he kind of gets the MMA, uh, workload. So I'm not dieting. I'm pretty much diet dieting specific for my workload. Uh, like I said, it's, it's just eating for performance and, and I still get to eat a good amount. I'm not like starving myself or anything. I'm not even really worried about dropping weight. It's more just, uh, being clean with what I'm eating so that my performance can be the best it can be. Now, this might be a crazy question, but if you're walking around at, at 205-ish, I mean, I, I know a lot of fighters, you know, that would cut from 205 or more all the way down to, to 170 and fight at welterweight. Would that ever cross your mind or is that just too much of a cut for you? Also, it's kind of crossed my mind a little bit this camp just because with the diet and everything I've been, my weight's gone down. I've been walking at like 195, 196. Um it would be something I would consider for sure. I don't necessarily feel the need to cut a ton of weight. I feel like I, I went that route in college wrestling for a few years. and I didn't perform very well. I made the weight always, but I just didn't perform very well. And I think some people can perform awesome off a of bad weight cut. Uh, for me, it was it was really, really tough. And I don't feel like at 185, I'm small. I don't feel like I get out uh, muscled or or manhandled and I feel like I'm a lot faster and I feel like I have a better cardio for that weight. Uh, when you get at 170, the pace is a little different. The style of fights a little different. Um, so I feel good at 85, but I have thought about it just because I am walking a little lighter. Uh, if I was consistently still 205, 210, I don't think I would, but um, I got to get with Tyler after this fight and kind of work on, do we want to go to 170 or do we want to just figure out how to maintain the 205 weight so I'm kind of 85. I'm not super undersized. All right. In interesting uh, discussion to to have there. I'm sure you'll be just fine at, at middleweight moving forward. Uh, I interviewed a teammate and friend of yours earlier today, Dustin Jacoby, uh, one of, uh, I'm sure, your best uh, training partners that you can ever imagine having there at Factory X. Who else have you been getting that working with the, for this camp? I've been working with uh, Josh Fremd a lot. He actually has a fight coming up this weekend. He took a short notice fight on Dana White looking for a fight. That kid is a stud. Uh, I think we'll see him in the UFC very shortly. Uh, I've been working with Austin Jones. He's got almost 20 fights. He's a veteran of our team and uh, super, super talented athlete. He gives me a really good look for uh, Dolce. He was a uh, running back in Nebraska, so he's super athletic, super explosive, good wrestler. Um, and then I've been working with a couple other guys like Basil Hafez. He's uh, he moved out here from Philly. Uh, he's a great addition to the team. He's a black belt in jujitsu, super solid grappling chops. Um, yeah, I mean, at Factory X, I got so many good training partners, you know, it's been, I'm very fortunate and blessed that, you know, every round's a tough round. Uh, Anthony hasn't been in the gym much because of everything he's got going on with his knee. You know, he had a bad staff infection, so he's just getting back to being able to train. And I think we'll see him here in a couple of weeks. So I'll probably have him here for the la the tail end of my camp, but, uh, yeah, I've had my full camp, pretty much my full room other than him. So it's been good.
So we're still a little over a month out. What left do you have to, to do? Is, is it just basically getting in there, just getting that repetition, getting that last little bit of weight off and, and just staying healthy? Or are you going to be working on anything specific here in this last month? Uh, well, we'll just keep working the same stuff that we've been working. You know, I, we've been uh, kind of making some tweaks to the game and, and forming our game plan for this fight. Uh, really, it's a game plan for everyone. This guy has just happened to be someone we could start working towards. You know, my last fight, we kind of took that fight on 48 hours notice. So there wasn't a lot of time to game plan. It was just kind of going there and fight. And uh, this one, I feel like we've really made some adjustments. You know, my first year and a half at Factory X, I was just getting a ton of information and trying to process through that information. And now I have a huge uh, array of information. It's now just funneling, funneling it into a game plan and into my style of fight. Uh, so that's pretty much what we've been doing the last 12 weeks. We'll continue to do that uh, up until the fight. My weight's always good. My shape's good. Uh, so there's not really too much that's going to change between now and then. You know, it's just trying to get the peak at the right time and, and reps and reps and reps, you know. So, uh, yeah, everything's going well. I'm, I'm excited because of the changes we've made and the changes I've made. I think uh, I'm a more focused fighter in terms of what I'm trying to do and, and what uh, – instead of just going out there like, Oh, I'm going to go get in a fist fight and this and wherever it goes is where it goes. I feel like I'm more focused in terms of like, here's how I get the victory. Here's where I'll be successful. If this isn't working, this is what I should do. And just having a clearer mind in terms of how I go get the win. Yeah. And you did mention, you know, your last fight, obviously uh, that was with Nick Maximoff, very, very short notice. Uh, you stepped in there and replaced Carl Robertson. Is this just a case where it was too short notice to perform at your best? Like what, what are you taking from that loss? Uh, so that fight was like the week of that fight. A lot of people don't know. It was like the craziest week of my life, right? I get called up. It's been a dream of mine for years. You know, it's the call everyone wants to get. And I get called up on Wednesday. Thursday, my daughter has an appointment with our neurologist. She's been, she's had uh, infantile spasms, which isn't super common, but uh, it's not that it's not that it's not a big deal. It, it definitely is a big deal. But then on Thursday, they called and told us that she has a super, rare gene mutation which uh really affects her brain and her development and um it's called alg 13 there's only been about 60 cases ever it's the first case that uh my hospital's ever seen and we're at children's hospital in denver which is a, a really good hospital for kids you know pretty well known on the west coast and uh this is the first uh that they've seen of it so you know i'm finding that out as i'm going through my weight cut and so then i'm like okay I have this fight my, my, I'm a first time parent already. So I'm don't, I'm still trying to figure it out because at this point she's seven months old. So at this, I'm still trying to figure out how to be a dad. And now I'm trying to figure out how to be a UFC fighter. And, and then I have these super high emotions of, I achieved this goal that I've had for so long. And then I have these other emotions of like, what's my daughter's life going to look like? What's me and my wife's life going to look like? And it was just a super high and low, uh, in terms of the emotions. And, uh, I remember right before I walked out to that fight, just for a split second, I was like, damn, I kind of hope this fight goes 15 minutes. Cause that's 15 minutes. I won't have to think about all this other shit I got going on. And that's not necessarily the best thought you want to have before you go out into a fight. And, you know, I don't, I think Nick fought a great fight. I think, uh, I didn't fight a bad fight by any means. I just don't think that I really, uh, fought to my potential. And, I know that the biggest thing I learned from that fight afterwards is that I don't ever want to leave the cage feeling like, damn, I could have given a lot more. And I, I remember as soon as the third round ended, I was like, damn, I could go two or three more rounds. And um, I think part of it was just dealing with a lot mentally. And uh, also part of it might have been the short notice, but more so just what was going on that week. And it was a lot to deal with, you know. Wow, I I can only imagine. It, so first of all, I'm sorry. I'm definitely sorry to hear about the, the troubles with your daughter. It, it is Do you have a good prognosis now like is she going to be okay what what is the the future going to to look like uh so we're still trying to figure it out you know that's kind of one of the hardest things is there's it's such a rare thing that uh there's no really great prognosis right now like we're hopeful we're you know uh we're in a couple of facebook groups with other parents whose kids have the same thing and uh they're like oh your daughter's like she's almost a year old and she's just learning to sit up and roll over and she she's not crawling or walking and uh but the fact that she's sitting up and can hold herself standing and those kind of things, the parents are like, wow, our kids couldn't do that till 18 months. And we're like, OK, well, she's ahead of the curve. And, and uh, a lot of that's credit to my wife. You know, uh, my wife's a very talented fighter. Uh, she was in the UFC and she's really been like, Cody, I want you to go fight. I want you to train hard. I'm going to take over this role of parent caretaker so that you can keep pursuing what you're doing. And um, 
but right now the prognosis is just kind of unknown. You know, they have the hospital that we're at has all the, I have all access to the medical journals that they're using to run her prognosis. So we have the same information. There's not a ton of information out there. Um, but we're hopeful, you know, we try to stay positive. Not every day is a great day, but most days, you know, we, we try to stay positive odds. We're lucky that I think both of us have kind of defied odds our whole life in terms of at least athletics, you know? And, and so we're like, okay, well, odds are just numbers and we can figure it out. We can make it work. So like I said, we're hopeful. We don't really know what the prognosis is long-term. Uh, but yeah, we're just trying to stay positive and be hopeful throughout the whole process. Yeah. Well, I, again, very sorry to hear about that. I'll send prayers to you and the the family here uh, moving forward and hopefully you guys get some good news. So I obviously, I know, I know you're a sports fan. We, we've talked, uh, you know, previous interviews, you're a Patriots fan, Tom Brady fan, just like myself. Today was a sad day. Uh, he, he hung it up and he's moving on to, uh, to bigger and better things, I guess, spending time with his family. W when you look at, you know, just the uh, him as as an athlete, you know, uh, for me, he's he's the all time goat. Like, where where do you feel like he stacks up uh, as far as all time NFL players? Oh, as far as NFL, he's definitely the all time goat. I think his story too is uh, super inspiring. You know, like uh, everyone talks about MJ and how MJ didn't make his high school team, but MJ in college was MJ. You know, he was a badass in college, and then he went to the pros and he continued to be a badass. Like Tom Brady was in college and everyone's like why would you ever waste a draft pick on this kid why this kid has no talent he's slow he's not going to be a good fit in any program and then he goes on to have the greatest career that we've ever seen um there's something really inspiring about that and uh yeah i'm i'm, ha I'm sad because i'm like dang man it's done and like i think he just makes sports better in general you know i don't i think there's very few people that are tom brady real like real haters like you might hate him but the reason you hate him is because he beat your team not many people can say anything bad about tom brady like oh he's a bad dude that's why i don't like him so i think it's sad for the sport but i'm, I'm happy for him man and he's literally accomplished everything you could ever accomplish he's having he's leading what all the path he's leading pass yards this year or right there at the top and he might win the mvp this year and to go out on that note is like oh i'm going out on my terms and i don't know there's something super pre impressive and, and respectable about that yeah, for for sure. I may or may not have shed a tear earlier today. I'm not going to confirm or, or deny, but I'm just going to move on. Give me your Super Bowl pick. Who win? Who wins? The Rams or the Bengals? Uh, I'm going to go Rams because I don't think the Bengals' offensive line is going to be able to keep uh, Joe Burrow too too safe. You know, I, I think uh, the Rams got the best defense in the league. Um, it's just a tough matchup for Cincinnati, but you know they've been proving everybody wrong all year, so. Who knows? We'll see. And plus, you know, I'm a Michigan. I am a Michigan guy. It, the the love everybody has for Tom Brady is crazy. But the only other player that I'd say, like, people just cheer for, and maybe this is because I've been around Michigan, is Matt Stafford, man. You should see the Lions fans out there. It's like, we're, you would think that the Lions were in the Super Bowl. They're like, our quarterback is there. We're going to win it all this year. I'm like, you know, like, he doesn't play for your team anymore, right? Like, we don't care. We love Staff. So, uh, it'd be cool for him to get one and uh, crazy to think like what if he was on a legit team his whole career man where he would be at but uh, yeah it'd be cool if he was able to go out and get a Super Bowl. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. And, and Burrow and Chase, they're so young. They got plenty of time. I think it's the Rams year right now. I, I do want to get one fight pick from you before we transition to, to your matchup. Uh, and that is the uh, the middleweight title that's next weekend. Robert Whitaker, Israel Adesanya too. Who wins and how? Ah, it's tough, man, because uh, Izzy at 205, you know, his wrestling didn't look very good. But at 85, his wrestling's looked really good, especially his wrestling defense and his jujitsu. You know, Kelvin Gaslam's a legit wrestler. And in that fight, uh, Adesanya put him in some submission trouble off his back. He was able to avoid the takedown. When he did get taken down, he was able to get up. So I don't know how much of that was Jan being almost probably 240 pounds and how much of it was everyone saying, oh, this is the path to beat Izzy. And I don't necessarily think that, you know, I've seen interviews, Robert say, oh, well, their blueprints right there. And, uh, you know, I saw Izzy respond. and was like, well, just because you got the blueprint doesn't mean you can build it. And I, I'm kind of leaning that way. Uh, the first fight was pretty dominant. You know, Robert was doing that blitz. He blitz, blitz, blitz. And Izzy's just tough to do that against because he's so long. He understands distance better than probably anyone in the world uh, in MMA, at least. And. Uh, I think Izzy gets it done. I think it'll be a more competitive fight. I think Robert will come out and 
try to wrestle really hard for the first two, three rounds. Uh, but I do see Izzy getting a finish maybe late fourth, late third. Uh, I just think it's a really tough fight for Robert. And what's sad is Robert, I think, for sure, without question, is the next best 185er. You know, it's kind of the same thing as welterweight. If there wasn't Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington's the champ. If there wasn't Izzy, then Robert's the champ. And, and uh, that's kind of a tough spot to be in, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. I'm I'm hoping Whitaker gets it done. That way we see a trilogy, but uh, who knows? It should be a, a good rematch here next weekend. All right, now your opponent, uh, Dalcha, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to try and do his last name again. He's 11-3. and three. He's 2-2 two and two in the UFC. He's coming off a UD loss to Mark andre Berrio. How do you like this matchup for yourself? What kind of a fighter is he? What, what kind of a style is he going to try and bring to you come fight night? Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, he's not a very tall guy. He's 5'8". Um, he's super explosive. Everything he throws is to put your head in the third row, but he's just kind of like just bites down on his mouthpiece and throws. There's no real, uh, finesse to his game. You know, it's, I'm going to run you over. And if I can't run you over, he's in trouble. And so I think the game plan to beat him is pretty, pretty easy. And I, and I think the way he wins is he knocks me out. Right. I'm not, that can obviously happen. The sport's crazy. But I feel like I can beat him in any way. I can sub him. I can decision him. I can knock him out. I feel like I can win in all ways. And I don't feel like he has that option. His option is to connect with a big shot and hope that the Hail Mary lands. And I think we put together a really good game plan to fight him. You know, I'm not worried. I feel like I should have proved to everyone that uh, I'm not worried about fighting the shorter bodybuilder body type. You know, I fought William Knight on Contender Series, and I don't know if there's a bigger guy in the UFC. So... Not that body type and that explosion and power isn't really uh, scary to me because I feel like my style is built for that. You know, I have really good cardio. This guy's cardio is probably his worst attribute. So I feel like I can push a pace with my wrestling and my striking that I've been working on. And I think that's just hard to deal with. You know, no one's really challenged him in terms of the wrestling. He's a black belt in judo. So I don't know if people are just scared to get into the clinch with him or tie or close that distance. Uh, but we're going to see, you know, I, I'm going to push pace. I'm going to get to my wrestling and we'll see how he responds with that. Do you ultimately see this going the distance or do you feel like you're going to be able to get him out of there? I feel like I'll be able to get him out of there. I think I'm going to push a hard pace in the first round. And I think it's going to be tough for him to uh, keep that pace. You know, I think maybe I think that first three, four minutes is going to be intense and there's going to be some fireworks and he's going to have his moments some big exchanges. I just don't see him being able to, to sustain that for 15 minutes. He hasn't proven he can do that in any fight he's ever had. And uh, he doesn't only get tired. When he gets tired, his defense gets much worse. He gets much lazier. He gets much more telegraphed on what he's doing. You know, maybe he's made the changes, but in four fights in the UFC, he's been the same guy every fight. Um, and he doesn't really have much to offer off his back, you know, and I think I, I do a really good job of putting people there. Uh, you know, that's kind of my forte. So uh, I think I think it just bodes well for me to, to win the fight you know I'm heavy I keep good pressure I have really good balance if I get on top of you it's it's a lot of explosion and effort to get me off and then if you already struggle with cardio it just feeds into my game you know well I will not be missing this fight I can assure you of that Cody Cody Brundage meets Dalcha Lungjimbula on March the 12th always a pleasure talking to you my man before I let you go I want to give you the floor tell people where to follow you on social media and if you have anyone to thank or is yours um you can follow me on cody underscore brundage underscore uh that's my instagram uh my twitter is cody brundage one i gotta get my twitter up you know i gotta i gotta start <laughs> being on twitter a little bit more you know as i catch myself scrolling but i'm never posting uh people i want to thank just my team you know they've been putting in a lot of work with me my coach coach mark gives me all the time in the day he's never i've asked i ask him for privates all the time he's never once told me no sorry i can't do it so you know i really Jay Hamm and the time he gives me. And then my wife, you know, she's literally the reason I'm able to train. She's the reason I'm able to compete and, and do, give my best effort. You know, if she wasn't doing the things she was doing, I don't know how uh, I'd be fighting at all, really. So uh, those people, you know, those they make everything possible. And uh, Tyler Minton, obviously, you know, he's helped me a lot this this camp. Uh, that's been huge for me. But, yeah, the team, there's definitely a whole team there, man. They help me a lot. My uh, Oh, yeah, my uh, – agents too over at iridium they got me this matchup they always keep me busy and they're helping me out always so i appreciate all those guys